Hello, 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 and welcome to yet again another Real Women Chronicles podcast. I am your host, certified life coach, Tiadra Taylor. And today I am so excited, guys. I have a very special guest with us. She goes by the name of Nancy Solari here, and she is based out of Huntington Beach, California. She works as a certified life and business coach. She's also a motivational speaker. She's a best-selling author, and she's also the CEO of a company called Living Full Out, where she aims to help people and inspire them and all that good stuff we love to talk about here on the show. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. We're super excited to have you. So for those who are not familiar with who you are, just give us a little background about yourself, Nancy. Let let the people know. Sure, absolutely. So um, so originally, I am from the Northwest. I grew up in Washington and Oregon. And, okay. um, you know, had a good childhood, although I was one of those 10-year-olds that unfortunately fell victim to um, my parents getting divorced. And, you know, I had to watch them go through domestic violence as well. It was really tough to watch um, and take in as a 10-year-old. Um, oh. After my parents split, um, my mom and my sisters tried to do- deal with the pain as best they could, but I further went on to, you know, see them go through eating disorders, my sisters, and my mom went through cancer, breast cancer, and, you know, I, I as this 10, 11, 12-year-old girl, just kept watching and watching, and so I think it was really interesting how, I guess, I went into my adulthood you know, wanting to go into broadcasting and wanting to go into psychology, not knowing really what that would look like. But I knew that I was very interested in watching people and how how they took in hardships and what they learned from it. And, you know, I would have hoped that my, you know, lessons in life would have ended uh, back in my childhood. Yeah. But like so many of us, they keep on going. And um, oh, yeah. in my adulthood, I... um went on to, you know, experience infidelity and infertility and financial losses and sexual harassment. And I just give these things to you because I think it's really important that we always remember that life is meant to be played out like a game and it also keeps us on our toes. Don't get super comfortable because that's when the next hardship comes, right? right. And, um, And then over time, just found my lane. I found my purpose and created Living Full Out, which I'm sure you and I will dive into more, but it's a motivational speaking coaching company. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is an amazing story. So you studied psychology. Where'd you go to school? I went to the University of Oregon, go Ducks, oh. and, um, you know, um, I, 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 it, it was so wild. I, I just, again, that same girl watching all these things unfold in her, in her life at a young age, I found a lot of comfort in watching Oprah, and I just remember wow. thinking, you know, how do you get that job? You know, and yes, I and I watched exactly. and I watched and, you know, I thought, well, got to know something about broadcasting and you got to oh, yeah. understand human behavior. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So when I went to school, I, I got those two degrees and kind of kept running. Wow. Wow. And then you have the company Living Full Out that was birthed from what, what year did you start that company? In 2008. And okay. uh yeah, and it, it's awesome. It was, but it was also birthed from a hardship. You know, it was kind of uh-huh. watching other people around me struggle with finding their purpose and dealing with relationships. And and I thought, you know what, I I want to connect the dots. Like I want to figure this. I want to crack this code. Like how do oh, we yeah. live a life of purpose? And how do we, you know, find that place in our life where we could exhale? And that was kind yeah. of my journey. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing. And that's definitely a God-given purpose. Here at on our podcast, we talk so much about purpose. We we talk so much about overcoming obstacles. So it's amazing just to hear your story and just to see how your life has transcended and how you've used those hardships to just help other people. I definitely believe it's a God-given purpose. When did you know that that was your purpose? Like at what age? Because I, I see a lot of, I coach a lot of clients that have trouble 
finding their purpose and identifying their purpose. And of course, you and I, by now, we know how to coach them through it. But at the same time, sometimes it's a spiritual awakening. How was it for you? Well, you know, I think life is meant to unfold and to layer. Yeah. And when I, I I had multiple careers, when I got out of uh, University of Oregon, I went into broadcasting and was really working hard to become an anchor, a reporter. And then for various reasons, I transitioned into the music industry. And I realized sex, drugs, and rock and roll wasn't the perfect yeah. fit either. So then I went into real estate and was in that for 13 years as a top producing realtor. But then, you know, the, the thing that I, I understood, understood about myself in each of those careers is that, number one, I kind of had the entrepreneurial bug, right? I had that oh, yeah. going. Definitely. Number Number two, you know, I enjoyed listening to people tell their stories. I think that's why I enjoyed, um, you know, broadcasting so much. And then the power of music and the emotion of that. Yeah, and then in real definitely. estate, it was really helping people's dreams come true in the sense of, like, their, their first home or the largest investment they'd ever have. And so I kind of put that all together and I said, okay, I want to listen to people I want wow. to be in an industry that taps into emotion, and I want to help people's dreams come true. And so wow. it just kind of all layered on each other. That's amazing. So would you say majority of your experience comes from schooling or life experience? I, people ask me that a lot. <laughs> and Hands I can down, say, life experience. Yeah. Oh, Hands. exactly, exactly. But but I but but you know I will say that I do believe in a good education because oh, um, yeah. I think that's when you learn how big the world is. Um, yeah. But it's the it's the life lessons that kind of build our stamina, our backbone, and teach oh, yeah. us who we are and who we want to be. Amen, amen. And I I know here we talk a lot about infidelity. We talk a lot about that because. It's just it's just been my purpose. I, I work with life and relationship coaching. So I talk a lot about overcoming heartache and disappointment and love. And what what tips would you have for our listeners when it comes to just trying to break free from toxic relationships and just overcoming being upset by individuals that you really, really counted on? You know, that's a really good question, and I'm going to answer it two different ways, just super briefly. One okay. is I, I really do believe in innocent, innocent till proven guilty. I really do. Oh, and, yeah. you know, you can have all the suspicions in the world about someone, mm. but I think that outside influences, meaning movies or, you know, divorce rates, 50%, you know, stats or, yeah. you know, other people's influences yeah. or their yeah. advice, I think – Sometimes you have to calm the noise and you really have wow. to go to the end of your rope and know that you have the evidence, you know it's real. And at that point, you're not sad or as sad because you really know what you're dealing with. A lot of times in the world of infidelity, that loss is because you you – you mourn the loss of what you wish that person could have been. But there's wow. a big difference between yep. what they could have been and who they really were, you know? Amen. And so, so that is, you know, something that I would say there. And that's my, my first thought. And my second thought is, you know, when it comes to infidelity, we can learn something about ourselves. You know, maybe if, if your audience are people of faith and they trust in the fact that, this relationship taught them something, but it wasn't their end of the road. If somebody's oh, yeah. not a person of faith, then, hey, we all believe in karma, right? So That's right. I Amen. Think, I think every day you just, you just wake up every day, you love big, you trust. Don't let somebody take your trust away, that ability oh, to trust. Okay. Then they yeah. win. So, oh. yeah, I'm all about, you know, you know getting past um, infidelity to a more powerful place. Yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that you mentioned the trust again. I, I preach that so much because once we stop believing, nothing that we want will manifest itself. And I say that so much to my, to my, to my viewers and, and just the people that I speak to on a day-to-day -day basis. Your belief system will manifest anything you want and the things you don't want. And I often preach about that same thing, just keeping the faith, believing in love, no matter what happens in life. We all kind of yearn for love. Do you agree? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and that's what really connects us together. You know, that's oh, yeah. why, you know, when somebody takes advantage of you, when somebody lets you down, you have to really remember that that person feel bad for them. I mean, what a bad day they must be having or who taught them those behaviors. And I almost feel more sorry for that guy, that gal than I do for me, because I know that I have the capacity to love and and keep bringing a new love. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I often coach clients that find themselves in repetitive toxic relationships, just constantly relearning the same lessons. What's your suggestion for that, those type of individuals that just keep finding the wrong individuals? Uh, well, I'm raising my hand and I'm high-fiving them, right? Because, <laughs> because I get it. I get it. And I think, again, that's part of maturing and growing. Like, you know, yeah. none of us want to get old, right? We don't want to get old. We don't really want to mature. We want to be forever young, whatever that is. But there is something really exciting about knowing that even if it's one, two, three relationships in, eventually you can smell the predator. You can smell oh. the person mm-hmm. who's unfaithful. You can, you, you're, you're on to that player, right? Or you're on to oh, that yeah. taker. And you become very wise and not jaded, just wise. And I think oh, that yeah. is the recipe of life is to get wiser and wiser. I absolutely agree. And I I noticed that these type of relationships have a way of taking a toll on a person's self-esteem. I lived through it myself. And it will really tear your self-esteem down. What is your suggestion when when it comes to breaking free from these toxic relationships and just building that that love for self? We live in a society that we're, we're constantly comparing ourselves to everything we see, every other relationship and it especially women we just have such high standards it seems and so we we fight all these insecurities how do you suggest overcoming that have you dealt with that personally in your own life absolutely um again there was uh, one gentleman in particular i we were together four years and you know, found out that he was having an affair, but I found that he had had many affairs. <laughs> I was not the first oh, one. Wow. Um, or or even in other relationships, you know, some yeah. I had a, a gentleman I dated, and he was struggling with depression, and I was struggling with my my loss of my vision. But you know, he went off of his medication, but didn't tell me, and that that allowed him to go deeper wow. and deeper into a hole. And and again, that is not fair to your partner either, because yeah. you know. I could have saved him so much sooner in terms of his emotional state if he hadn't done that. Mm-hmm. So I think that sometimes we have to remember that we all do the best we can, right? Mm-hmm. And really, Amen. you want to you want to think two things. Number one, be very careful to be too much of a victim, too much oh, yeah. of a woe me, you know, kind of vomiting your first yes. stuff yes. to everybody, right? Yes, Amen. And I, I think we sometimes have to be really selective as who who's our audience because yeah. there are going to be those people in our life that will hear the same story 10 times in a row. They'll always be the us. And then yeah. there's other people that if you tell the wrong person, they will gossip, they will judge, they will lash back. So knowing right. your audience when you're hurting is really important, knowing who you can turn to. And then number two, I, I believe in feeling emotions through because remember, stands for energy in motion right so Mm. if you're sad feel it through like be sad and um listen to a song that makes you even sadder (laughs) you know like really flush it out and and take that hour take those minutes take that day and honor it but the key is to know that your life is waiting for you literally wow. waiting for you. So every time I had a breakup, every time I had a letdown, it'd be so easy to like, you know, have a glass of, you know, more, more glasses of wine than I would need, or it'd be really yeah. easy to just slide into bed at like 5 p.m., exactly. right? But, but the thing is, is that's not who we are. So sometimes exactly. we have to be our own best friend and say, you wow. know what, you are awesome. And look in the mirror and say, you know what, you got pretty eyes or, you know, you're smart and just really be there for ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've, I've found 
so many times that that that's all it takes. Sometimes that separation is just to get you more in tune with your own feelings. And I totally agree that when you're sad, you need to feel that pain because so, so often we try to suppress it. We try to go to work and we try, I, I mean, granted, life happens regardless. We still have to move along the day. We can't be, you know, sick and shut in being depressed, but we often suppress it and we don't admit that we're hurting or that somebody hurt us or we don't want to cry about it and sometimes that's just what we need nancy we just and so i absolutely agree with you we absolutely need that now moving on when we're talking about purpose that is so powerful for me it's it just brings so much joy just the topic of purpose because i was lucky enough to identify my purpose as as with yourself years ago now if you find have you found that people who do not know their purpose often suffer from self self esteem issues do you find a correlation between the two well i find that they're lonely because when okay. you have a purpose it's almost like your purpose becomes a friend Right, a buddy, you know. Yes. And yes. and 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 you know, I don't need to go out on Friday night. I got my purpose, right? <laughs> Whatever that is. Oh my and God. somehow staying at home with your purpose is okay. But yes. when people don't have a purpose, then they feel like they're constantly wandering, circling, waiting, looking, hunting, and it's like they get tired. Like, what am I looking for? And then they get lonely and they get exhausted. And yes. you know, one of the things I want to tell everybody is that a purpose does not have to be a big business. A purpose doesn't mean that you're a star. <laughs> you know, a purpose yeah. can be being a really good friend, the best parent you can be, you know, volunteering, making a difference. Um, you know, there's, I'm visually impaired. So even when I go to the grocery store, my local store here, you know, I have certain uh, people that help me shop. And they always feel purposeful. They're like, I'll, I'll help Nancy. I'll help Nancy, you know, because, yeah. you know, A, they get out of, you know, I don't know, doing like shelf stocking, but they, <laughs> they get to help me shop, yeah. you know, but, but it's purposeful. So just, just find out what makes your heart sing. Like, what are you wow. naturally good at? Like if I could write for a living, that could be a purpose or, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I just love helping people and I love being with around kids. There's a purpose. You know? Wow. That, wow. You made some valuable points, Nancy. Oh my gosh. You spoke to me right there in that moment. You are absolutely right. Now, so just to touch on it, just for the listeners. So you did mention that you're visually impaired. How, and I remember you telling me uh, it happened, was it adolescent years? Uh, yeah, so I, I was actually 16, and I have two other sisters. We all have the same eye condition, which is called retinitis pigmentosa, okay. and um, it's a degenerative eye condition, so there is no cure, and what it does is it takes away your colors, it takes away your depth perception, it causes okay. night blindness, a whole bunch of things, and today yeah. I don't see faces. Today my world is very patchy and blurry and all that. But you know what the interesting thing is, is mm -hmm. it took away the flashy objects. It took yeah. away, like, I don't go on social media and see who I'm competing with. I can't see them anyway, you know. Wow. Like, yeah. my inner compass, my lead is that purpose. It's my heart. It's my mind, you know. And so I think sometimes... You know, I don't think I would go back and change things because it's it's really made me a better me, I think. Wow, that's amazing. And, you know, as I stated before, us women, we deal so much with, you know, having that low self-esteem because we deem certain, you know, we're too big or we're too small. So just just listening to someone who can just overcome that at, and during the adolescent times where, you know, we're so judgmental of ourselves, especially around 16, 17 years old. And just to listen to you and just hear, I mean, your soul is so beautiful. And I think that people really, really need to be in tune with that because we, we value sometimes the wrong things, like you said, that comparing and just, just constantly comparing ourselves to other people, constantly judging other people. So it, it's amazing to say that that's been a blessing instead of a curse. Sometimes what we deem to be a curse can actually be a blessing. Did that affect your self-esteem at all? I'm sure maybe for a period, right? 
You know, it's funny that you asked that question because I don't think it'll ever not affect me. It's okay. like um, the other day I went to kind of a social function, and it was all good when I first got there. But as more and more people came, it got louder and louder. And as the mm-hmm. sun went down, it got darker and darker. And mm-hmm. I found myself in this place of I can't see them and I can't hear them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I'll go home, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, yeah. why am I here? And mm-hmm. and there was a moment of loneliness. It was a moment yeah. of gosh, I wish I could communicate, but like, mm-hmm. I, I can't see them. Does anybody see me? You know, and, I, and yeah. I went home and I did what I encourage your audience members to do again, have that go to friend. And yeah. I called them. And then I did mm-hmm. exactly what I told your audience. I mm-hmm. went home, I listened to music, I had a glass yeah. of wine. And yeah. I just kind of sat with it. But mm-hmm. then I felt it through. And then on the next day, I woke up and I said, you know what? That was a learning, and the, the, I didn't wow. get that. I, you know, it was just a learning moment. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing, and and I think it's important for callers to realize, even though we're certified as life and business coaches such as yourself, motivational speakers, we still deal with life. We still deal with emotions at times, and I, I, I often say that on the podcast because oftentimes people deem, you know, folks like ourselves that went to school for psychology and things that we just automatically don't feel anymore. And and it just doesn't happen. That's just that we, we, we need God. We need spiritual guidance. We need that peace. We will forever yearn to have that peace. And we'll never be perfect, you know? So we will have those days. And I'm glad that you were open enough to share that because it does show the authentic part of us, you know, that we can still feel, you know, disappointments and hurt or upset for the day. You know, the great thing about it is we, we can just, you know, wash it off and Keep it moving, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, when I talk about living full out, I mean, that's what it means. It it, yeah. it means that, you know, you keep your eye on the ball. You keep your eye on your dreams and what you hope to have. But yeah. you also have to be realistic that, you know, from time to time, you're going to go off the road. You know, from time yeah. to time, you're going to stumble. But when yep. you when you know they're going to come, then when they happen, it's like, okay, I knew they were going to come. Like, who gets through life just skipping along and it's perfect? Nobody, right? Exactly. Everybody's That's got right. something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are absolutely right. And now that we touched on Living Full Out, the company, can you just give us a breakdown of what the company offers, what does it entail, just in case there's anybody out there that's in need, just let them know. Absolutely. So, um, so Living Full Out is a motivational speaking coaching company. And so the thing is, is when I created it back in 2008, it wasn't just to help people in business or mm-hmm. just to help people in life. It was really meant to help you through the various stages of life. Wow. Okay. Um, and so that's what we're dedicated to doing. So one of the things that we have is our radio show, which is a call-in radio show. And I take the calls personally. It's live. And, oh. and that's an opportunity for people to – talk to me for, you know, five minutes or so, tell me their challenge, and I, I kind of give them my advice, and, okay. and you know, hopefully it makes a difference, and then we interview inspirational guests that come on, and, and hopefully we learn from them and see part of ourselves in them, and we mm-hmm. have our blog, and we have articles that cover a lot of different topics that people are, are faced with, and yeah. And we just make sure, most of all, to give you the learning at whatever platform you need it. And what I mean by that wow. is some people are auditorial learners, and some mm-hmm. people want to pick something up and read it. And That's so true. whichever way you learn best, we got gotcha. you. Wow. Amazing, amazing company. Now, I see here that you are also a best-selling author. Tell us about the book. Well, you know, I've actually, actually I've written several books, and okay. um, yeah, and and I've done a lot of collaboration books as well. I wow. I'm a team player at the heart, and so oh, a lot of times it. people will come to me and say, Nancy, I'll you know co-author this book with me or whatever, and I do that. Um, a lot of my books have been on either you know, personal growth and development um, or, you know, how to become a better presenter or public speaker, um, you know, how to grow a business, how to deal with a disability or health challenge. And so if you go to livingfullout.com, there'll be a page there where all those will be listed. But again, it's just kind of finding, you know, how we can help you best. 
Wow, that is absolutely amazing, Nancy. So if anybody wants to get in touch with Nancy, can you drop that website, your phone number, your email, just so they have it? Absolutely. They can go to livingfullout.com. And again, everything will be waiting there for you. Also, we're on all the social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube and LinkedIn. So connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to send me an email, uh, you can reach me at connect at livingfullout.com or call us at 310-909-7800. Wow. Thank you so much, Nancy. It has been a pleasure having you on my podcast. You are absolutely amazing. Y'all reach out to Nancy. She is anointed on a whole nother level. Thank you so much, Nancy. Well, thank you for having me. And I just, I hope that everybody lives full out, laugh a lot, yes. love a lot, never look back. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining in. Thanks again, Nancy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.